Alright, probably going to be seeing this on a Wednesday now instead of a Tuesday night because the, call, the, I mean, the Champions Classic went a little bit later than I thought it would go. Um, that is unfortunate. I took a bath, you know, everything's all nice and clean. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. College football, week number 11. November is here. November continues to surprise us. Last week was a huge surprise. A lot of teams got a little bit of extra tricks. You know, it's a little bit of extra tricks in those treats. You know, if, if you get what I mean. And the biggest trick of all is, you know, how we've escaped with no COVID cancellations. We had some in FCS early in the season. I do know that much. I, I forgot. I think we forgot to talk about one of them, actually. But I mean, the FBS has escaped it until now with a postponement due to Cal, you know, just the city of California, or rather the city of Berkeley, California, you know, where Cal is located, the University of California is located, has had some COVID protocols in place that have been in place since the pandemic started. And yet, it seems like nobody at the University of Cal, the ADs, presidents, and uh, coaches didn't follow through. Players are confused, don't know what's going on, they're upset. And I'm, to be honest, I'm lost too. I really don't know the whole situation. I do not know the whole situation. It is a messed up situation because this could have been prevented if the players and stuff, you know, if everybody was tested properly and stuff like that. But again, Cal had 20 plus players miss the Arizona game due to COVID. So, again, those tests were positive. So, uh, again, I don't know what's going on. I do know this, though. Cal USC postponed to December 4th. That's conference championship weekend. There's no impact on any games for these two teams because Cal is like at the bottom of the Pac-12 North. USC is pretty much at the bottom of the South too. So again, there's no point. In fact, USC is pretty much eliminated from any sort of, you know, getting the division title or anything like that. So there's nothing that is going to prevent this game from being played unless something stupid happens. But I mean, I doubt it. Um, so there you go with that. There you go with that. Let's get into these games now. Let's get into the rankings too. Um, hold on, let me, let me let me get the rankings out real quick. Okay, okay, I got them. I got them. I got the rankings. So at number twenty-five is Arkansas. Twenty-four Utah. Twenty-three finally ranked UTSA. Almost said U USTA for a second there. We all know Gary Bard is confused. Um, 22, San Diego State. 21 is Pitt. And you go up, 20, Iowa. 19, Purdue. 18, Wisconsin. 17, Auburn. 16, NC State. 15, Ole Miss. 14, BYU. Yes, BYU's still in there. They're still in the mix for a New Year's Six Bowl, too. Don't forget that. Baylor at 13, 12, Wake Forest. We knew they were going to drop after taking a humiliating L last week. Texas A&M is at 11. Then you got Oklahoma State at 10, 9, Notre Dame. Oklahoma didn't play, didn't move. Number 8. The problem here is number 7 is Michigan State, and yet number 6 is Michigan. And then, you know, from there, Cincinnati's at 5, Ohio State 4, Oregon 3, Bama 2, and Georgia obviously is number 1. I have two problems with the poll, or rather the CFP's poll. It's 1, where's Penn State? They've beaten Wisconsin and Auburn. I think that's a lot of people, that's a lot of people's problems with it too. The other problem is why is Michigan State below Michigan? Michigan State beat Michigan. Don't give me that. Oh, well, Michigan State's all around the better team. Don't give me that. If the head-to-head -head matters for Oregon and Ohio State, then the head-to-head -head should matter for Michigan State and Michigan, too. Do not give me that. Oh, well, it took 30 minutes to debate. It took an hour to debate, you know, where these two teams are going to be right. It really shouldn't have taken you that long. It should have took you, like, two seconds. It's just like, 
Oh, epiphany. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Wow, guys. You know, wow. We, we really fudged this one up. Uh, it's a, it's a, actually a very simple process here. Wow. Why didn't we think of this before? Michigan State at 6. Michigan at 7. And that's it. That's all we have to do. That's all. That's it, guys. That's it. But no. No. No, 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 no. We want to we want to do all this extra stuff. No, 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 no. That's fine. That is fine, man. That is fine. You know, that is fine. That's perfectly fine. Whatever. Whatever, man. But let's get into the games. Let's get into these games now. Thursday night talk about North Carolina at Pitt. How about North Carolina last week? Sam Howell going to have a duel with Kenny Pickett. It's going to be a big duel. Huge duel because the ACC Coastal is starting to get a little intense. There's a lot of things riding on this game here. No defense will be expected. I do not expect any defense here. Pitt might get caught slacking just like Wake Forest did. You know, Again, there's going to be some high-scoring ACC Coastal games in the next few weeks. Hopefully, I mean, this one's going to be this one right here is going to be interesting to see how this goes. Because again, you know, Pitt, pretty damn good team. That's why they're number 21 in the country. North Carolina, you know, struggled throughout the year, but they got a huge victory last week. You know that. So, again, this one's going to be fun. Friday night. Gonna be it should be it shouldn't take too long for me to watch this game because I mean if it's if it takes 30 minutes for Cincinnati you know to get the blowout started against USF you know I mean I, I do not want to spend a entire first half which takes like two hours now you know to see Cincinnati put up 29 points or something like that but but again Cincinnati just take care of business that's all that's all we're expecting you to do. You know, I originally wrote down can Cincinnati impress the committee, but I mean they are sitting at number five. They're sitting at number five for a reason because I mean nobody has impressed. You know, nobody has impressed at all. It's it's not a good it's not a good time to be in the AAC because again the AAC is really really down this year. That's why, that's probably why you know Houston isn't ranked. That's probably why because I mean the Americans just that bad this year. Again, San Diego State's wins are stronger than Houston's. I've been saying that since the since the rankings came out. That San Diego State's wins are stronger than Houston's. Even their loss, you know, a lot stronger than that. But that's not the point here. Again, AC down this year, so you gotta just take care of business, get South Florida. Just take care of business. Just take care of business. New Easton on Saturday, we get started with one of those cupcake games. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. Now, um, we had one last week with BYU. Here's another one. New Mexico State and Alabama. New Mexico State, not a good team. I don't know why they're taking on Alabama this week and Kentucky next week, but that's just how the schedule is as an independent. And speaking of New Mexico State, how about Conference USA? Let, let's talk about, let's segue back a little bit. There's a rumor circulating that Middle Tennessee might be staying in Conference USA, there's a little bit of a rumor swirling because they want to collect that exit fee money. You know, it does not seem like they want to move to the MAC. We'll see what that. We'll see what happens there. I personally don't know, and I, I just don't want to care because I don't think the CUSA should survive. But they're going to survive anyway, potentially. It looks like, and if that happens, I don't think the MAC will just take one. You know, that just Western Kentucky, I don't think they'll just take Western Kentucky. I think they um, it, like they want that package deal because, again, it would make the divisions a lot easier. Just move Toledo to the east, you know, for for, for travel purposes and stuff like that. Like, oh, awful. oh, we get to take on, you know, all of our Eastern Conference opponents, you know, all of our, all of our Ohio teams in Ohio for Toledo. Make that easier. But I, again, I, I digress on that. I just don't know what's going on there. Um, the other thing about conference realignment is we'll go back to the lower level, the FCS, for a second. Technically, you know, we'll go back to the FCS for a second. McNeese is staying in the South. I do not know what's going on with UIW. Incarnate Word, I don't know. I do not know what they're doing. 
Um, again, UIW's facilities just aren't up to par, and McNeese staying in the Southland and getting some perks by staying in the Southland, so Gonzaga type deal. Um, so some perks there. That that's why you know McNeese is staying. And I mean the WAC right now, you know, not really particularly intriguing anymore because again, New Mexico State is indeed leaving. And Sam Houston State is going to Conference USA, you know. So, you know, there, there's also some rumors out with those Western most teams, you know, at least Cal Baptist and uh, Grand Canyon. But those those are basketball schools. We're not here to talk about basketball. I know I just said, you know, earlier that I watched Champions Classic, I think. I think I said that. If I didn't say that, uh, I did now. Um, but yeah. That's about, that's about it for Conference Realignment. Bama! Let's go back into this game real quick. Bama should take care of New Mexico State rather easily. Tide do need to work on some things, though. They need to work on some things, you know, get the offense together because you can't run for six yards, you know, like you did against LSU. You can't do that. So just get it together. You'll be fine. You know, get the defense together. You'll be fine. Get it all together. Michigan, Penn State. Again, Penn State, for some odd reason, was not ranked. I don't know why. Michigan has some injuries, Kate McNamara, you know, and Blake Corum, especially Blake Corum, he was definitely injured last week, yeah, I mean, again, Penn State, tough environment, you know, Penn State's out of the Big Ten race as well, you know, the Big Ten East race, and this one is going to be a defensive struggle, it's going to be a definitely a defensive struggle in which there's not going to be a lot of points scored. One of my first big games of the week here that I have bolded, you know, bolded in my notes is Oklahoma, number eight. They didn't move. Number 13, Baylor. They only moved down one spot. Huge, huge game for the Big 12 race. Baylor has to rebound, you know. This was not a good performance against TCU last week. Defense was not there. And if you don't have a defense against Oklahoma, I, I fear... I fear for what's going to happen because, I mean, again, Oklahoma found their stride against Texas Tech. I'm still not sold on Oklahoma's offense, though. Again, just been sputtering, a sputtering mess the entire season. You know, they finally played their first complete game. We'll see if they can keep doing that. You know, at the defense, also a huge head scratcher. You know, again, a huge head scratcher like it has been all year long. Baylor, we know they've had a balanced attack with Abram and Bohannon, you know, and especially the receiving core for the Bears, you know, again, fresh off by for Oklahoma, we'll see how this goes. Mississippi State and Auburn, Auburn, right now, your your job is to play spoiler. Your job is to play spoiler. Again, you can spoil Mississippi State's hopes of going to a bowl game a little bit more if you beat them. And, you know, you have, you have just, you know, a couple weeks to the Iron Bowl. You could spoil all that a season, but you got to get Bo Nix consistent. You know, defense looks pretty damn good. Run game has been good with, you know, with Tank Bixby. But Bo Nix is the X factor here. He's the X factor, and he just hasn't gotten all of it yet. He's about as consistent as Sean Clifford. Pretty inconsistent. I'll tie these two games together, Northwestern and Wisconsin, and Utah, Arizona, Utah, finally right. Cam Rising has risen, and Utah has risen to the top of the Pac-12 South. And Arizona, this is not going to be the same thing that you had last week. You got lucky last week. Your luck has run out. It's time for another 20-game losing streak now, Wildcats. So this one should be easy, and for Wisconsin... We know that Northwestern's run defense is terrible, so Northwestern should get ran all over, like Wisconsin did to what I they did they did I believe they did that the Iowa oh, I'm mistaken I forgot already, but I mean Wisconsin had 300 rushing yards in the game at one point, and I think they should do that again, do that again. I want to see that. And remember, Wisconsin is in you know in front in the Big Ten West right now by technicality because you know a lot of teams are forward too in the Big Ten West um, let's get to that 330 slate shall we let's get to it big game here Tennessee Georgia it's not one of my bolded games in uh, honesty but but I will say that Georgia hasn't seen a team that plays as fast as Tennessee that's really the only thing that might get Georgia off guard because I don't think 
I don't think there's going to be too much of an issue for Georgia, but I mean, it's it's something that we have to keep in mind that could potentially, you know, again, catch Georgia off guard to the point where they could lose this game. They could lose it. I'm not saying they will. They could. You know, with Hendon Hooker and Josh Heupel coaching them up, I mean, Tennessee's looking real nice after that upset last week against Kentucky. Looking real nice. The only problem for the Bulldogs has been the same problem that it has been for a month or two now. The quarterback situation. But I'm assuming Kirby Smart's going to play both JT Daniels and Stetson Bennett again. I don't know. They pro he probably will. Purdue, Ohio State, though, this is bolded. I don't have a lot of notes on here um, because I have a lot of thoughts about Ohio State. Um, Purdue, can they do it again? That's really the biggest question here. Can they upset another ranked up team? You know, they've done it with Iowa. They've done it with Michigan State. You know, with David Bell. You know, that connection from O'Connell to David Bell. That has been the connection that has worked in those two upsets. And Ohio State, they really don't have a lot of questions on defense, in all honesty. They play tough on defense. They get it done on defense. You know, they get enough done. They just get enough done. It hasn't been always pretty on defense. The offense has been the bigger question to me, though. They can put up as many yards as they want to. They put up a lot of yards. I mean, they put up a lot of yards. C.J. Stroud puts up a lot of numbers. But, I mean, C.J. Stroud is like, you know, he's, he's definitely an A.J. McCarron, uh, Greg McElroy type guy this year. Elevated by the stars around him. Travion Henderson around him. Olave, Garrett Wilson around him. Just, he's been elevated by the guys around him. Not a not Heisman material in any sort of the way. Not Heisman material. Y'all can shut up. Y'all can, can, can suck it. He's, he's not Heisman material. Same thing with Bryce Young, you know. I'll talk, you know, again, not Heisman material. Neither of those guys are. But they're probably going to New York anyway. They're probably going. I'll say that right now. They probably are going to go to New York. Where we could have, uh, I forgot to say this last week, but I think the highest bid candidates are Kenneth Walker, Matt Corral, Kenny Pickett. There you go. That's my three, in all honesty. This is my three guys that should be going to New York City. But Ohio State, anyway, let's get back into it with Ohio State here. I do not think this game is going to be a blowout because some people have said this is going to be a blowout which I, I definitely disagree with a lot of people are saying like oh well Purdue's run game is weak which is I've looked at the stats of some of these games and that is also not true um, Purdue, the only time Purdue really gave up a lot of rushing yards was in like maybe one game and that was it um, so you know Again, that's a, that's definitely you know something because I mean I mean Purdue can match up with Ohio State pretty well. It seems like if they can match up with Michigan State pretty well. They can match up with Ohio State. They can match up if they can match up with Iowa pretty well. You know Iowa's not not the best team, but I mean they can match up well. Again, this is going to be an interesting matchup here. Minnesota Iowa. This is big for the Big Ten West. Um, Big Ten West technically led by Wisconsin, but Minnesota's right there, Iowa also right there, Purdue is right there. These are two teams in the state of flux. Alex Padilla, he is going to start for Iowa. Minnesota, they need to get that spark back that got them that four game winning streak, and they gotta get some leeway. They gotta get some leeway. I believe they're the ones that's, you know, technically, you know, the last of those four in that, um, it's either, no wait, no, that's Purdue. But Minnesota needs to beat Iowa. That's the first hurdle for them. They need to beat Iowa. And, you know, Minnesota didn't look good last week. They lost to Illinois. That's why they're out of the rankings. That's probably why Penn State's not ranked either. But it is what it is there. Going to be an interesting one to see. I don't think I'll be watching. I think I'll be watching this if Georgia and Tennessee gets out of hand. You know, it is what it is there. Um, these next two here probably probably going to be blowouts. At least one of them should be. Another one I kind of think might. Maryland, Michigan State, that's the one I might think may be a blowout. Because, I mean, again, it's a disaster, you know, for Maryland's pass defense. You know, Michigan State, they it seems like, you know, they couldn't, couldn't do too much last week. They, well, they could do something. They obviously could do something against Purdue, but they couldn't do enough against Purdue. They, they could not do enough against Purdue last week. 
And, you know, both these teams have terrible pass defenses. Just awful. Just awful pass defenses. So is it going to be, you know, one of those games where it's Peyton Thorne versus Talia Tagovailoa in a high-scoring game? I, I honestly don't know because, I mean, again, uh, I'm not even sure who, I'm not even sure what Maryland's doing at this point because, I mean, they're 5-4. I haven't watched a Maryland game in weeks. So there's no point in me talking about Maryland. But I do know that Michigan State needs to keep winning because Ohio State is coming Penn State is coming, you know, again, it may not seem like that Penn State has any authority here, but they have some authority to stop some things, stop some playoff implication type things. Yeah, it's like that. And Southern Miss and UTSA, UTSA finally ranked again. Congrats to them. I'm not going to really be talking about this game in all honesty because you know, we so we discussed the guys already. We discussed Sincere McCormick. We discussed Jeff Trailer. We discussed Frank Harris. We discussed how good this UTSA team was last week, late last week against um, UT, UTEP, not UTSA, because they can't play themselves. Um, this game has a 33 and a half point spread, I believe. So, UTSA, I hope the betters are going to be happy. You know, if they get that money, if they don't. Sad days are going to be ahead for betters. <laughs> 7 Eastern. Let's get into it. There's a couple of big ones here. There's actually like three or four big games here. And one of them, obviously the game of the week, probably should have been the CPS game in all honesty. But we'll see it, you know, again how that goes. Uh, because, I mean, again, we all thought Texas and Alabama wasn't anything, wasn't going to be anything special. But if you look at what happened in that game. And A&M, speaking of them... They're great defense. Isaiah Spiller, too. Really things have been turning around for AM. They have they have something. They have something going. And they could be going to Atlanta if they could keep winning. But they have Matt Corral, potential Heisman winner in the way. A Rebels defense that isn't bad by any stretch to me. It's not a bad defense for the Rebels. We've been saying that. We've been saying that for the entire season, that they haven't had a bad defense. It's been pretty interesting. It's been a pretty interesting one. And this one's going to be another thriller, I think. It's going to be another big game here. You know, I know a lot of people are thinking a and is going to walk away with this one in a tightly contested game. And I think it may flip into Ole Miss's favor if Corral can get it going. You know, running game two, four. This Ole Miss Rebels deep team, you know, if things, going, things get going for Ole Miss, see, it might be hard to stop them might be hard to stop them. I mean, I know it seems like, you know, the scores for Ole Miss haven't been as, you know, lopsided or anything like that or as high scoring. But, I mean, again, this Ole Miss team can score. This Ole Miss team can play. They can play real damn good. The other the other real big game in this time slot that got relegated to the ACC Network because the third matchup that we'll be talking about, but this is my second to last bolded game here. Aside from A&M Ole Miss, um, NC State Wake Forest, a top 20 matchup. This is huge for the ACC Atlantic. Huge game. Devin Leary, Sam Hartman, going to have a duel. Going to have a duel. But NC State has a little bit more defense, I think, and that's my, that might be what propels them to the victory here. You know, should be a pretty high scoring, pretty fun, pretty entertaining game on the ACC Network, unfortunately. Because, guess who? Notre Dame. Yeah. yeah, they've been sneaking. They've been sneaking up in these polls. They've been sneaking up everywhere. I don't know how, but here they are. Notre Dame with that just that one loss to Cincinnati. If it were, you know, undefeated Notre Dame, they'd be top four right now. I guarantee you that. But thank you, Cincinnati, for doing what you needed to do, which was beat Notre Dame. And the question, the biggest question here is, will Brendan Armstrong be able to go? I mean, this is the first time, the uh, first time I saw this guy was playing against BYU, and they, it was back and forth, back and forth. Defense for Notre Dame is different than BYU's, however, very much different. It's emerged as a strong physical unit. The the Notre Dame team of last year has come back in the full form with the way they've been playing on defense. Kyron Williams has been playing lights out this year. Jack Cohn still, still looking solid. It's not, it's, it's definitely game manager. Jack Cohn still, you know, not like, not like I thought initially, you know, like back at week one against Florida State. 
but he's, he's doing what he needs to do, especially with Tyler Buechner coming in the game, too. You know, Notre Dame has just been solid. They've been racking up wins. Solid, just solid team. Sneaking their way. Could potentially sneak their way into the college football playoff race. You know, they're still technically in it, but they could sneak in with some chaos, and chaos could be brewing this weekend. I love me some chaos. Give me all the chaos you want. Mm -mm. It's so delicious. Uh, yeah, this one's going to be interesting to see. Um, I don't know how long I'll have. To, I don't think I'll have this game on at all for most of the night unless things get bad in Ole Miss, Texas A&M, or NC State, Wake Forest, which I don't expect that to happen. Um, there's two other games here in this time slot that are worthy of talking about. Again, you know, these are top 25 teams going up against, you know, teams that are having pretty, you know, down seasons. TCU having a down season, but they did beat Baylor last week with a freshman quarterback, Chandler Morris. And it's Jerry Kill and Mike Gundy reuniting Oklahoma State. You know, their defense just continuing to look that damn good. That good. It's that good of a defense. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I don't know how TCU is going to handle this. I mean, again, it's going to be a road environment at Boone Pickett Stadium in Stillwater. Uh, I, I just don't know, you know, if TCU can pull this off again. I don't know if they can pull it off again. They're not Purdue. They're not Purdue this year. They're not. But, I mean, they, they might be able to do something. They might be able to do something real interesting. Arkansas LSU is going to be a battle between KJ Jefferson and Max Johnson. Arkansas's pass defense is probably one of the huge question marks here. Can LSU get out of their own way? That's the other big question mark because they had chances against Alabama the last week. They've had chances all season long to get out of their own way, but they couldn't get out of their own way. That's why they lost at UCLA. They got ran over, couldn't make adjustments on run defense. You know, I mean, and they, they, they got it. LSU's got to get out their own way in order to win. So this one's going to be interesting to see, you know, how this goes. Because Arkansas, you know, trying to, you know, keep the momentum up. I mean, this is technically a battle of bottom dwellers in the SEC West. Technically. Technically. These are the last two place teams. These are the two last place teams in the SEC West. That's how, that's how much of a gauntlet the SEC has been this year, man. At least the SEC West. Amazing. Almost all of these teams have been ranked at some point. Let's get to the last bit of games here before we wrap this up. Um, Washington State, Oregon. This is a big game in the Pac-12 North. Oregon's playoff hopes are technically on the line here, as they will be from here on out. And, you know, Oregon... That offense hasn't been there this year. Anthony Brown is like way too inconsistent. He's definitely a Sean Clifford, Bo Nix type quarterback. Just too inconsistent. And this is going to be a huge test because the Cougars defense has resurged into a solid, solid defense. Jade Delora has been a solid, solid quarterback for Washington State, even with all that stuff that you know they were dealing with what Washington State was dealing with with all their coaches and their stances on COVID you know Washington State's been real off victory after victory and you know you all know Oregon's defense is pretty good but you know this again this is going to be interesting to see I know a lot of people are saying you know it's like a 16 and a half point favor for Oregon but again let's not pay attention to betting lines because betting lines are stupid that's why that's why you had LSU take Alabama to the limit it was only a six-point game, but yet the line said 28 and a half. Stupid, just stupid. So this one's gonna be this one's gonna be real interesting to see here. The other late, the other real late game that I'll have on in tandem. I'll probably have this on after Texas Gonzaga. That's gonna be one hell of a college basketball game. I already talked about that. You can go see that. Uh, but Nevada, San Diego State, Carson Strong from Nevada. Oh boy, this is a high-powered Nevada team. High-powered Nevada team. This is a key Mountain West, Western Division showdown, and I'm just wondering if San Diego State can finally find some type of offense. You know, they looked ugly last week. I honestly am tired of watching the San Diego State team play offense at this point. Just punt the ball each and every time, please, 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 damn it, please. Just punt the ball every time with Erasia. So yeah, that that one's gonna be big. And that's going to do it. 
I'm gonna get on out of here, skedaddle, because it's midnight, and I really didn't mean to take this long to record this. So, Big Boy Sports signing out. I'll see you guys Thursday for college, or not, in, or at the NFL. Yeah, the NFL. That's what I meant to say. See you on Thursday for the NFL. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, click the notification bell, blah, blah, blah. Do all that good stuff. And again, I'll see you on Thursday. Good night, everybody.